I'm nice sassies. So, I got some breaking news for y'all. And I'm gonna make this video, but I can't post it until after the thing happens because it would ruin the surprise. So, grab a seat, get a beverage, come on back. It's story time! So y'all know that I work with some amazing people. Like, we're talking like uh, amazing. Uh, I don't you know another way to put it, but these people make you feel special. And they make you feel like you're your family. And it doesn't matter what you need, whether it's somebody to listen to you, somebody to bitch you out, somebody to help you run a job. It doesn't matter, they got you covered. Since I've been at L&L, yeah, that's what I wear, L&L products. Since I've been at l and I've worked all three shifts. I've gone in when people's in their bed sleeping and dreaming. And I'm just going in and starting my day, you know. Because I was a midnight person. That's where my l and career began, was on midnight. I left a place, put in my two-week notice, and took my vacation at the same time. Went to l and as a temp on a whim. Just to see what might happen. And let me tell you, I've never regretted that decision ever. Not one time. Even a really bad day at l and is a far better day than pretty much any other place that I've worked at. And yeah, I've worked at some great places. I've been kind of lucky with that, y'all. And I've always had good people that I work with. You know, I've been real lucky there. But you have some that you don't. And there's issues with pretty much every other place that I've worked at that don't seem to be the same kind of issues at l and I'm not going to try to blow, blow smoke up your bunghole because I ain't going to try to say it. There ain't never no issues at l and Oh, it's a perfect place for you. Yes. Oh, yes. We always get along. Oh, yes, yeah, we all love each other. No, we ain't going there. Everybody got some people they don't get along with at work. Everybody. Everybody. For whatever reason, whether it's that other person's choice, your choice, maybe you have religious differences, politics, sports. I don't know, some. There's some, there's some reason that you and that person, they, you just don't click, you know? But when you have days that you have to work with that person that, you know, you just don't click for whatever reason, you just got to have some other way to make that stuff go away. Well, mine's right there. My heart of us. Yep. I do me some wind therapy, and ain't nothing, and I mean nothing, not even COVID, ain't nothing bothering me. It's just, you are free. You also try it if you ain't never had it. I'm serious. It might cure some stuff for you. See, I get off track easy. Oh, something shiny all the time for me. Anyways, so my l, &L career began on a day that was their profit sharing day. And that profit sharing dinner, yeah, they had a dinner. They put on a whole dinner. Not like, you know, just like a sandwich and maybe a bag of chips, maybe some water from the drinking fountain. Oh, no, no. They put on a real catered dinner. So you feel very special. I mean, very special. On um, May 13th, 2015, that was a Wednesday night. That was my first night at L&L Products. 
and that was technically a Thursday for people on midnight, which is where I started. So I walked into the food, and at the lunch, the food, this dinner that was catered, that they just give to you, was stuffed cabbage. Like, Grandma made stuffed cabbage. Not like something you went and got in the freezer part. No, real stuffed cabbage. I was so blown away with the fact that it was real cabbage rolls that right offhand right now I cannot remember what the rest of the vittles was. But I'll go try to look it up on my social media because I know I posted it on Facebook with a big old long thing that I wrote about basically how blessed I was to be at a place that thought that much of you to give you all this food. There was a whole bunch. Desserts, salads. Oh yeah. Pop. And the silverware looked like it was real gold silverware, but it was plastic, but it looked like it was real gold silverware. It was kind of cool. I know. I, well, it was something shiny, you know? I told myself right then and there, I said, self, I said, what? I said, you have found your place you will retire from. I said, hey, now, who's talking retirement? We ain't that old. Self said, we are that old. And we are talking, this is where we're going to stay until we retire. And pretty much 30 days from the day I walked through the door, I walked through the door on May 13th. And on June 18th, I signed my papers to become one of the l, &L family. And I cried. You can ask my boss, Kenny. At that time, he was my boss. He was my boss again. And now he's not again. But anyway, you can ask him. I, I felt honored to be asked to be part of these great people. I was just floored. They wanted me to be a part of this. What? After I signed that paper, I came home, I did myself a little Victor dance, you know, hoo, hoo, hoo. you know, we all got one of them. And I thought about it. And I said, self, what? We're going to try to make as many people smile and have a good day and feel special as possible each and every day that we are at work. And also outside of work, but especially while we're at work at l and And why, do you ask? Well, because I just felt that I wanted to give as much back to l and as I could because I was just so honored to be a part of something so great. Every day I try my hardest at work. I mean, we all have our days we slack off some, whatever, but I always make sure, always make sure that I'm making good product, sending it to the customer. I take pride in my job. I honestly do. And I love the people I work with. Love y'all. I love the people I work with. You know, my pa used to say, if you love what you're doing, you'll never work a day in your life. Well, I get a lot of that because my job's not easy. It ain't the hardest job in the world either, but my job's not easy. It requires your physical and your mind. And you gotta be able to pay attention, which is hard for me. You all know this. It's hard for me to pay attention. Ooh, something shiny all day long. 
always all kinds of moving things. There's lights and bells and whistles. Oh my god, you guys don't even know. See? Didn't take long for me to get off track. When I got hired in, I was on midnight. But the position that I was going to fill was on afternoons. And it was in a whole different area than I had already been trained. I started off in assembly. It's not even there no more. And then I found out I was going to the twin screw area. <coughs> if you didn't laugh, you're not really my friend. Just saying. I mean, come on. That was funny. I had heard what I would call horror stories from people that worked in the twin screw area. Like getting material on some kind of roller that cost all kinds of money and maybe having to put it in a freezer or something and just some bad paper change thing, which I had no, I, I couldn't even imagine what a paper change could have been. Paper change? Paper, paper change what? <laughs> what? Paper change? Yeah. And how hot the machines were and stuff. I was like so scared. Yeah. So scared. But after I got there, everybody was so nice. And it wasn't that bad. And then just like things do, you know, if you keep repeating it, and repeating it, and repeating it, at some point you're going to get it right. Well, I hope I'm going to get it right. Anyway. And then, about three years into my l, &L career, if, to be exact, I think it was three years and three months. I got a phone call from Miss Josie in HR saying that uh, they wanted to know if I'd be interested in going to day shift. Like, you know, normal people, day shift. I thought I was on an episode of, like, Candy Camera or something. I'm looking around, okay, where's the camera? I mean, like, I thought it was supposed to take me forever to get on day shift. So I went. You know how hard it is to go to bed that early? It's almost physically impossible for me. I'm a night person. I'm not a day person. I mean, I'm happy no matter what time I get up, whether it's daytime or nighttime. That, that doesn't affect me, but I can get up in the afternoon with no alarm clock. Daytime? <laughs> Not gonna happen. I found out my very first week on days that getting out at 2.30 in the afternoon was awesome. Oh my God, all the things. Just think about things you could go do. Just think about them. You get out at 2.30 in the afternoon, you got the whole rest of the day into the night, right? No, that's not how it works. I know. Sucking the fun right out of it. One, you got to go to bed so early that you go to bed before your own children. If you have children at home that have a bedtime, that is. Because you got to get up. Hell, before even the chickens and the rooster gets up. And then, once you, uh, let's just say you just leave work, you know, you driving yourself home. And you get home. And, oh, before you got to the house, you picked up the mail. So, you're like, oh, look, it's a letter from Aunt Sadie. Let's read it. So, you open that baby up. Get it all open. You're starting to read it. Oh, let's sit right down for a minute. You're done. Yep. Done. You're so done that if you don't have an alarm set 
to get up, like if it isn't already preset, like you, you didn't have to physically do it because you fell asleep reading the letter as soon as you got home from work. Anyway, if you don't have a line preset, you can guarantee you ain't getting up on time for work tomorrow. Guarantee. And even if you was lucky enough to have a said pre alarm to get you up in the morning well that is no guarantee that you're gonna get up either see like this a shift is a whole different thing it's you hit the snooze and the snooze like 20 times and then you go as fast as you can to get into clothes and out the door because you need to get to work. And even though I'm sure they're all still laughing, and I'm glad that I could make you laugh, but I'm still embarrassed about it. My very first week going to days, I got there every day on time. Except for Friday. My alarm was going off for like an hour, maybe more, but I know for sure it was an hour. I remember the horrifying phone call that I had to make to my boss to explain that I had overslept. And my boss, being the great guy that he is, kind of chuckled and said that everybody thought I was going to be late on Monday. I went from afternoons to days. So they was all surprised when I made it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday on time. They thought I had it. Then Friday came. That alarm's going off. I bet you my neighbors could hear it. But I sure didn't. At least... I didn't acknowledge that I did, so I don't think I heard it. But I was sleeping, so I don't know if you can hear when you're sleeping or not. I'm sleeping. I don't know what happens when I'm sleeping. So when this stupid window liquor virus came out, you know what I mean, COVID. That is a serious, fun sucker. Well... Things had to change where I worked at, y'all. Besides all the kinds of safety stuff and, and cleanliness and things like that, well, some people needed to be moved around. They needed to make the shifts all equal again, because they was all messed up. And I was the very bottom of the totem pole on days. Yep. So I still feel like I'm blessed because l and didn't say you can't be a part of this family no more. They just offered me a different time of the day to come in and do my job. I could choose from afternoons or midnights. And I chose afternoons. I had already been on all three shifts. I got to see how all three shifts were ran. And the different things about the all three shifts and light, what, how it affected my life and all that. And afternoons worked better for me than midnights did. So I chose to go back to afternoons. And uh, like a really weird thing, I guess, is is the minute that I stepped in the door on afternoons, I felt like I was home. I don't know if it's because I've spent the most time on that shift, if it's the connections I've made with the people. Um, I don't know the, if it's the support. I, I don't know what it is. I mean, I think it's just everything. I just... I feel like I function the best on that shift. 
and even in my own life, like, you know, I said, each shift affects everything. I feel like afternoons works best for me. So again, I feel very blessed that I have a job. And I miss all my ladies on days. I made some real connections with some of them little sweeties. I mean, just simple things, like one of them got me these cute little hair ties, because she just thought that it'd be something I would wear, and I love it, and I wear them. I wear one every single day now, and there's been lots of things like that. I just made, I don't know, different connections with them than I did with people on other ships. Not sure why, but I really do miss them. And I think about them all a lot. There's this one lady. Her name is Lois. And she knows why her and I connected. We both share something in our personal life. Um, that's not something that you want to share with everybody. But it's sure nice to be able to talk to somebody that knows what you're going through. And... Anyway, she touched my heart a lot. She made me feel good a lot when days when I was very, very sad because of these personal things. Well, I noticed that she always had this Leonard Skinner cup with her. That she had her coffee in and stuff, you know? One day, she said something about the lid doesn't fit right no more or doesn't seal or... So, but she still has that cup every single day. I'm sure she loves that band. Her and I share that, love of, the love of going to concerts as well. So I decided to get on the internet and see if I could find that cup. Well, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, that cup, like, didn't exist. Not even on the official Leonard Skinner website where you can buy all kinds of merch. Nope. So I was officially bummed out because I thought, well, I'm going to have to get one on ones where you can, like, make your own and try to get it as close as possible. And then I found this website. And I said I'd take a chance because uh, it was worth it to me, even if it was a scam and I didn't get it. Because what if I did? And guess what? It came in the mail. That's it. That's the cup. And I'm going to take it to work and I'm going to give it to her. Just because. Because I want her to know how special she is. And how much she touched my heart. At a time that I really, really, really needed somebody that understood what I was going through. I think it's important as humans, especially the adult ones, that you do something or say something to another adult so they know that they're appreciated or that you're proud of them. Or something positive that they probably don't ever hear because adults just don't do that enough with each other. Why? We should just know. No, it's nice to hear. And you know it. You know you like hearing it too. And all I'm going to ask is that she pays it forward. Someday somebody's going to touch her life just like she touched mine. And she will do just like me. I paid very close attention to her because she befriended me. And that's what you do to your friends, you know? You, like, notice things like that. Like if they break a heel or, you know, chip a certain tooth or whatever it is. You know because you're their friend. I know about the cup because she's my friend. I want to do this for her because I just want to. No other reason. That's it. I just want her to know that she's real special to me. 
So, maybe one day, you'll see Lois with this cup. And you'll remember the story. And I hope it'll make you smile. Because that's what it's all about, guys. Smiling. And making others smile. It's way too easy to be mean. Challenge yourself. Be nice. Let's see if you can do it. Come on. Okay. That's the end of my story, my sassies. I hope you enjoyed it. It's short, sweet. No, it definitely wasn't that, huh? But anyway. Share them smiles, y'all. They're free. Love you. If you made it this far, you are awesome. And I want to give you a big hug. Thank you. And please subscribe.